So I'm going to go ahead and introduce Senator Paul Wesselhoff. I'm sorry, House Representative, my bad. Thank you. We always get promoted at these events from representative to senator. Uh, my house bill number is 1558, so write that down. It will be assigned probably to Public uh, Safety Committee, and we need to get that bill passed because it's very important. House Bill 1558. Let me briefly mention the two other bills uh, that I'm aware of. There's probably a, a, probably 15 bills in the House, <laughs> Second Amendment bills. So we, we've been very busy. Uh, Representative Cleveland has a, a bill. He, uh, Bobby Cleveland has a bill that has to do with sheriffs. How many of you have ever been hassled by a sheriff when you're trying to get your concealed carry and you don't think they're working very expeditiously? Raise your hand. Okay, a few of you. Now, I have a good sheriff, and Joe Lester, he expedited me getting my 10-year concealed carry permit. But some people have a difficult time, and sometimes there are problems, sometimes there's fingerprint problems, and they, but they charge you $25. Well, if it doesn't go through Cleveland's bill, make sure that you get refunded back your $25. The other bill, which I'll just briefly mention, is uh, Sally Kern has a bill for uh, schools, uh, be able to uh, have concealed carry on schools, if they, in private schools, if they vote to do so. If they're not obligated, but if they want to do that and they vote for it, then they can have concealed carriers. But there's a lot of good bills out there. Now let me just mention before I'm talking on, on the subject of universal background checks, which I absolutely despise, but before I do that, let me tell you what I, how I feel about uh, weapons. Uh, you, he mentioned that I'm a retired U.S. Army chaplain. You probably know that chaplains are non-combatants, right? You understand that? We're not to carry weapons. Okay. Well, I was assigned, uh, I had the privilege and honor to be assigned to the 1st Ranger Battalion right after the Grenada invasion, when those uh, Rangers went in there and liberated that island. Who are? So let me tell you what happened. The medical doctor in charge of that battalion told me, he says, look, we do some dangerous deployments. And when we were in Grenada, the Cubans that were there were trying to kill our patients, our, our military patients. He says, what would happen, because most chaplains gravitate in a combat situation to those that have been wounded so that we can minister to them, sometimes giving them last rites. So he said, what are you going to do when you're praying with one of your fellow rangers and a Cuban or someone other uh, person comes in there and tries to kill them, what are you going to do? I didn't have a very good answer for that. So I went down to my local store in Savannah, Georgia, where Hunter Army Airfield is, and the 1st Ranger Battalion is located, and I bought a weapon. Okay? So our next deployment was a clandestine deployment to Honduras. The public had no knowledge of it, the press. We were down there, and I put my gun in an OD sock. Just kind of hid it in a sock. And so I came to the medical doctor that's in charge of all the medics, and I said, uh, I said, here's my uh, gun, or I hope you're happy with it. So he took the OD sock away from my gun. He says, my gosh, you have bought a 45 caliber gold cup national match automatic. Yeah. I said, yes sir, I have. I says, is that good enough? He says, hell yeah. <laughs> so, I wasn't supposed to have it. I didn't get it issued by the government. I bought it on my own. So that's how I feel about protecting our, our soldiers. The subject that I was asked to speak about, and I'm uh, happy to speak about, are some of these uh, executive actions taken by President Obama. Uh, and let me tell you, in the state of Oklahoma, especially in your House of Representatives, we drew a line in the sand last year, and we pressured the governor and told her, take that money and give it back to D.C. Gentlemen, your House of Representatives are prepared to draw another line in the sand on some of these executive 
orders by President Obama. We're going to nullify them. The one I want to speak about that irritates me the most is universal background checks. Now, if I'm a public dealer and I sell arms, I have a store and I sell arms, and you buy one of my pistols or rifles, then there's a background check, okay? I can live with that. But if I'm a private citizen and I have a neighbor and he's a friend of mine and I want to sell him my 38 special, he has to have a background check? Yeah. Yeah. That is not interstate commerce. My neighbor does not live in Arkansas. He lives in Oklahoma. He's my neighbor. He's my friend. I know him. I want to sell him my 38, and it's not the government's business. So that's the kind of crap that's coming down from your federal government. Oklahoma is a sovereign state. to step out, step up, and be the model to the other 49 that we're not going to take this anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm very proud of one of our freshman senators that's getting ready to speak after me. He's got a more comprehensive bill that will probably draw the line in the sand. He is a freshman, so his bills are going to have to have you behind them. Because yeah. sometimes they don't give a lot of respect to freshmen. So he's going to need your support when yeah. he comes up here and he gives you those bill numbers, those Senate bill numbers. Write them down and call your representative, contact them, visit with them in these offices, and tell them that all these Second Amendment bills must be passed. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. honor of being able to speak with you today. Thank you for coming out on this beautiful day. And remember, let's draw the line in the sand. Yeah.